Goldie, we've seen these anti-Israeli rallies around Canada, around the Western world. We've seen uh, posters of kidnapped children torn down. And in Canada and elsewhere, we've seen the flag of Hamas's biggest backers, the Iranian regime, flying high. And this footage of uh, thousands of Muslims lining the streets of Toronto to pray together was highlighted by a, another MP, an Iranian-Belgian this time, Daria Safai, whose family, like yours and mine, escaped Iran. And she said what looks peaceful and innocent is, as she said, a political and social message. She called it a power display. And she also noted the strict gender apartheid that means there are no women among uh, that groups. What's your response to that? Is that something that should be concerning Canadians, these overt displays of, of people praying in the street? 100%. Absolutely. This should be very concerning. It is concerning to me. It is concerning to many Iranian Canadians. It is concerning to the Iranian diaspora around the world. Um so we have been sharing footage of the protests within Iran. And one of the ways that the terrorist Islamic regime in Iran, this Islamo-fascist regime, responds to pro-democracy Iranians within Iran who are fighting for freedom and democracy is they will take over their spaces and they will pray in front of them. And for a lot of people, mm. they'll think, oh, well, they're praying, they'll, they're being peaceful. But it's not. This is a sign of conquest this is a sign of power and it is very concerning and it is very frightening to see these radical islamo-fascist ideologies abusing the freedoms and the, the the charter like within canada for example the charter of rights and freedoms the, the canadian constitution to um say that oh what's the problem we're just praying on the street no you're not praying on the street you are participating in an unsanctioned rally. You are blocking traffic. You are taking over the streets. You are not allowing peaceful Canadians to just walk through and use public spaces. And you are using this as a tool of colonialization and, and conquer, conquering within this radical Islamofascist ideology. And the really frustrating part is that when the Iranian diaspora speaks out about this. We're accused of being Islamophobic. We're accused of mm. um, being racist. And it's not that at all. Like, this is the reality of Iranians. This is the literal reason why we came to Canada. It's to escape that terrorist flag you see right there, that Allah Akbar flag, which has nothing to do mm. with Iran. We fly the line and sun flag. There's a reason that Iranian women were named um, we're, we're given the, uh, you know, the Nobel Peace Prize. There's a reason that Iranian women were named the Time Hero of the Year by, by, by Times Magazine. There's a reason that Sherbin Hajipur won that award within, within the Oscars. People realize this, and, and yet the fact that we're seeing this radical Islamofascist ideology sort of ingrained within Western democracies is very concerning not to us, but it should be very concerning to everyone who lives in Canada, Australia, United States, and in European countries. There has been this bizarre alliance between the left and Islamists, which uh, which is, I think, uh, going to end in tears for, for everybody, including the left eventually. Uh, meanwhile, Goldie, you've got your prime minister there, Justin Trudeau, who's still refusing to label Iran's rev revolutionary guard a terrorist organization. Uh, tell me about his response to this crisis and more broadly, how the country has changed under his reign. So we, I know the Iranian Canadian diaspora has been calling for years to asking Justin Trudeau to list the IRGC as a terrorist entity and he still refuses to do so. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of U Ukraine flight PS752, which was shot down by the terrorist Islamic regime back in uh, January of 2020. Mm. And that flight, when it was shot down by the Islamic regime in Iran, initially they denied it for three days. They initially said that this was just propaganda from the United States and Canada, by the way. And it was only when social media footage came out from Iranians within Iran 
that the Islamic regime finally had to uh, concede that they were the ones who shot down this passenger flight, which killed 55 Canadian Iranians and also 30 um, permanent residents, uh, per Iranian permanent residents living in Canada, as well as, you know, all 176 innocent passengers on board. And literally one month later, Prime Minister Trudeau was seen meeting with uh, Z uh, Zarif, who was the foreign affair ministers at the time, shook his hand, bowed his head to this Islamic regime terrorist and pretended like everything was okay. And that was just such a huge mm. insult to Iranian Canadians because he is just so tone deaf and he marches in our rallies he chants he's angry he calls out the islamic regime and yet he's the prime minister and he does absolutely nothing about it and it's just it's very shameful to see this kind of behavior from the prime minister of a country that is supposed to stand up for freedom and democracy and yet we saw how he reacted to the truckers' uh, protest uh, and then the the manner in which uh, those uh, men uh, mainly were attacked. Uh, uh, there's so much to talk about. Goldie Gamani, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it.